dig as we go deeper in God tonight, as we go deeper in his word, uh, deeper in his nature and in his character, uh, trying to understand just a little bit more about God uh, to help us in our daily walk. Uh, I hope uh, that our brief time away uh, the last two weeks has not um, hindered uh, your study, your weekly study, uh, that you all have continued in study uh, of the word outside of our gathering together. Man, kind of recapping uh, your notes and going over some of the things that we've talked about, it, uh, getting it in your spirit. Uh, what David calls it, hiding it in your heart. David said, it is the word of God that I have hid in my heart that I might not do what? Sin against God. So it's hard for us to have the word in us, to have the word in our hearts, uh, and then not obey. It, it's a, it's a uh, conscious decision that you make uh, when you know the word, when you have the word in your heart, and then you choose to do the opposite, right? It's like with your children, before you potty train your children, you don't spank them or you don't discipline them or correct them for messing themselves before they're trained on how to go to the restroom, right? But once you've informed them, once you've taught them, once you've instructed them, once you've guided them, once you've corrected them over time, there is a a responsibility that they have to meet the requirement or the standard that you've set. And when they don't meet that standard, then there is penalty, there's correction. And it's the same thing for us. God holds us responsible. He holds us accountable. When we know the word, uh, when we have it hidden in our heart and we choose not to obey, God is watching that. He's paying close attention to that. For you to know, you to, you know that his word says that sowing seeds of discord is an abomination. So when you choose to sow seeds of discord, when you choose to lie on somebody, when you choose to try to paint a certain narrative of someone to someone else to get them to turn against someone, that's sowing seeds of discord. That does not, that's, it dishonors God, Right? So we have to make sure that in our getting, the Bible says, in all you're getting, get an understanding. So when we're learning the word of God, when we're dissecting the word of God, we need to make sure that we're learning it in a way that we can apply it to our lives. Because what's the use of having it? What's the use of knowing it if you're not going to put it into practice, right? Right? So we have, we have to do what James says. James tells us in his writing that we uh, shouldn't just be hearers of the word, but we should be what? Doers also. He says, so there's a two-part component to receiving God's word. It's hearing it, and then it's doing it. He says that the word of God for us it is a mirror. He gives this illustration in James chapter one on how do we look into the mirror? He said, no one looks into the mirror. I'm paraphrasing and sees a blemish or no one looks into the mirror. You don't look in the mirror in the morning. You see you got you got crud in your eye and you just leave it and go to work with the crud. I hope you don't do that. <laughs> Some of y'all said, ah, I don't go to work with Chris. I don't wash my face in the morning. <laughs> but uh, I hope that when you look in the mirror and you see, listen at this, a blemish or you see something that you can fix, something that soap and water can wash off, something that a toothbrush or some floss can fix. You see things in the mirror that you can fix. You're responsible to make that adjustment because while it may help somebody else, it may help somebody else for you to brush your teeth, but it overall, it helps you. I'm, I'm trying to be practical tonight so y'all understand what I mean. So when we apply the word to our lives, it is for us. You know, we, we love to take the word and whoop up on somebody else. Oh yeah, we, oh, we, we like to do that. 
We, 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 got, we have scriptures. Oh, we, we can call out, or oh, we can call out scriptures. We can call out scriptures on, on fornicating. We can call out scriptures on homosexuals. We, you know, we can call out scriptures on, on uh, people uh, that, that are whoremongers. We, we, we know all of the scriptures about sexual sins. But don't nobody know any scriptures about lying, about having good character. That, that is what's most important. There are two kinds of sin in biblical text, and I'm getting off on a tangent, but there are two kinds of sin in biblical text. There's sin against God, and then there's sin against yourself. Sins against God, sins of blasphemy. Uh, to, to speak against the Holy Spirit, to sow seeds of discord. Those are sins against God. That when you commit those sins, it offends God. Some sins, the Bible says the wages of sin are death. Some sins, the repercussion to that sin is already put in place. So God, he operates off principle. Something he doesn't even have to address because he knows you keep having sex out of wedlock, unprotected. Eventually, two things are going to happen. You're either going to end up with a child or you're going to end up with a disease. Though the repercussion to that is already in place. Are, are y'all with me? So there are sins against God, sins against yourself. And we have to make sure that we're aware of the word so that we know how to apply it to our lives so that our lives are pleasing unto God. That is what our purpose and our goal is. As men and women of God, as people called by his name, the ecclesia, the called out, the chosen ones, we are called to be like Christ. That, that's, why, that's why we've been talking about the nature and the character of God, because if we know his nature, if we know his character, then it should be easier for us to embody it. Are y'all with me tonight? So let's let's pick up let's pick up where we left off, and uh, I want to go a little deeper and try to uh, bring uh, us to a conclusion on the nature of God and kind of tap into the character because when tapping into the character is how we're going to see ourselves um, and how we can make some adjustments in being able to reflect who God is. So I gave you I gave you some things I gave you some things. Uh, on the nature of God. The nature of God is what God is, right? It is his natural attributes and qualities. You know, your attributes is a permanent quality. It's something that does not change about the individual. So we learned about God's nature. He's immortal. He's eternal, which means he's self-existent. He, he's unchangeable. His nature is unchangeable. He's invisible, which means God is spirit, right? Y'all got this? He, he's unchangeable, which means he's immutable. He cannot be uh, changed by nature, uh, by acts of nature. God exists solely on his own. He does not change. God has perfect member, we, memory. Uh, this is what we left off uh, last time we were in session, talking about how God remembers all things. And in him remembering all things, we talked about the power of him throwing our sins into the sea of forgetfulness. That if he remembers all things, how, how powerful, how much more powerful it is for the God who remembers all, who cannot forget, to be willing to forget the wrongs that you've done. Are y'all with me tonight? So God, he has perfect memory. He has perfect imagination. And I, I, won't, I won't get into that tonight. I'll save that for some other time. Um, but God has perfect imagination, meaning God can conceive all possibilities. And let me say that one more time. God has perfect imagination, which means he can see, conceive all possibilities. In the beginning, God spoke into nothing and nothing became something. It is the word in Hebrew, it is ex nihilos, meaning something out of nothing. God, he can conceive all possibilities. Where there is no way, God can make a way. 
Where, where you don't see the provision, God can give the provision. Where you don't see how it's going to work out and how you're going to make it through and how things are going to turn out, God can perceive all possibilities. Where there's a will, there's a way. God always has a will. He has a perfect will. His will is perfect. And I know some people teach that God has two meals or two wills, a perfect will and a permissive will. That's not biblical. God has one will. His will is perfect. And in God's will, in God's will, he wants to ensure that we receive all that he has in store for us, all that he has planned for us. For us, But the only way for us to receive that is by being transformed and by reflecting that of the life of Christ. I, I, want you to, I want you to see something. I want you to see something really quickly on why, why reflecting the life of Christ is important. I, I want to I show it to you. I want to show, show it to you uh, in, in Scripture. That before the foundation of the world, God had already predestined you to be conformed to his image. Go with me to Romans 8. We love, we love this, we love this, this scripture. Romans 8, 28, but I really want us to look at verse 29. Because this is, this is God's plan. This is God's plan for you, his purpose for you. And here, here's why he sent his son, Jesus Christ, for you. We, we know verse 28, and we know all things work together for the good of those who love God, those who are called according to his purpose. Look at this, verse 29. For whom he foreknew, he also predestined, look at what he predestined us to do, to be conformed to the image of his son. God's will for you is for you to look like Jesus. He said, I preordain and predestine you to conform. Now, this word conform, it, it, it is not a one-time thing. It, it is a continuous act that God predestined before the foundation of the world was even laid. He had already put in a plan for us to be conformed to the image of his son. Are you with me? So God desires that we look like Jesus. And when we look like Jesus, we are pleasing him. Are you with me? And that's, that's why it is important for us to know what it is that God desires of us, because when we know what it is that God desires of us, we can live in the full potential of who it is God has called us to be. Remember, he has perfect imagination. He can, he can conceive all possibilities. That's that word predestined. The word predestined means to set out barriers, it gives us the, the image of that God sets out barriers in the road while we're on the way to keep us in the right space to get us to a preferred destination. So God sets out barriers. He sets, uh, I, I don't want to say traps, but God sets out barriers or cones or, if you will, to keep us in a certain path. Because it is that path that is conforming us into the image of his son. Are y'all with me tonight? So God has, he has perfect imagination. He can conceive all possibilities, even with you. God can bring the best out of you. God can 
turn you into something that you never thought you would be. Some of you all are sitting in this room today and you, you are the, 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 the product of God's perfect imagination. That life should have taken you in one direction. Your decisions should have put you in one place. Your, your mistakes should have caused you to be living in, in, in a certain way. But because God had already had an image, he already had something that he's seen. He had already predestined you to be conformed to the image of his son. Are y'all with me tonight? So God, he, he, he has perfect imagination. He has perfect memory. God is all able. These are, these are the terms of God that if you've been in church any amount of time, you are familiar with these. God is omnipotent, which means he's all powerful. He's omnipotent. He's all powerful. He's omnipresent, which means that he's everywhere at the same time. Right? He's omniscient, which means that he is all-knowing. He is ignorant of nothing. So, in essence, if you ever want to describe the nature of God, he's omnipotent, he's omniscient, and he's omnipresent he's all powerful he's everywhere at the same time and he's all knowing okay he 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 he's everywhere at the same time that's why the writer tells us in acts it is him in him we live right we move we have our being so do y'all have that down on the nature of God? Any questions? Any questions on God's nature before we move into character? Any questions? Any, any comments, concerns, thoughts? All right. So nature is what God is, right? Nature is what he is. Character is why God does what he does. Nature is what? Character is why. Now, let me, let me say this. Character is a result of choice. Your nature, how you were created, you have no control over that. But your character, I want y'all to hear me good. Your character is a result of your choices. One of the things that we like to say when it comes to uh our character and how our character is perceived or not even more so how it's perceived Deke, but how our character is displayed is that such and such made me do it oh they I did that because they they made me say that I got so mad they they did something to make me so upset they they made me lash out on them no 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 character is choice you chose to respond like that. You chose to handle them in that way. Now, you may feel justified because they may have done something to you first, but character is choice. Just like you choose to be loving, you have to make a choice to be hateful. Just like you choose to be kind, you choose to be long-suffering, you choose to be short-tempered. Are y'all with me tonight? Somebody say character is a choice. Come on, say it again. Say character is a choice. Now look at somebody and say, neighbor, make the right choice. You, 
Your character is a result of choice. It is either blameworthy or it's praiseworthy. That's your character. Your character either puts you in a place where you can be blamed for something or you can be praised for something. I can either be blaming you for, for being evil as H-E double hockey sticks or I could be praising you for your kindness. Are y'all with me on that? Character not only is a choice, and he, here's why it's a choice, it's because it's voluntary. Character is either virtue or vice. Love is a virtue. Selfishness is a vice. Are y'all picking up what I'm putting down here? Character is either obedience to God's word or disobedience to God's word. Character is how you choose to relate to other people. How you choose to relate to other people. Nature is what a person is. Character is why a person does. That's what I want y'all to take away. Nature is what a person is. Character is why a person does. Character is how you choose to relate to other people. Praise God for Elder Bates tonight. Glory to God. Thank you for joining us. Character is how you choose. They listening. They listening. Character is how you choose to relate to other people. I want y'all to, to get that. That character is how you choose to relate to other people. That's why God is concerned about your character. Because he is interested in how you relate to other people. Because how you relate to other people is defined in Christendom, in, in Christianity, as your what? It's your what? How you relate to other people when it comes to Christianity is, is called your what? Your character. But your character is manifest or your character is necessary for your what? Good character is necessary for your witness. All right? That's why God cares about your character. Because you're called to be his witness. That's why, that's why the Holy Spirit, when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, and the Bible says it's going to give you power to be a witness, that means that the Holy Spirit is going to give you power to develop your character. Because how you relate to others dictates how people see Christ in you. And that is our job. We are to be conformed to the image of Christ so that we can show people who and what Christ is. So that they can then believe in what they see and what they experience, and go to God and desire that same type of, 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 uh, of conformity. Are you with me? So character is how you choose to relate to others, and that's why your character is important to God, because your character affects your witness. That's why many of us, we can't be witnesses on our jobs. That's why many of us, we can't witness to our family. Your, your young nephews and nieces and cousins, they don't want to hear you say anything about Jesus because they see how you act. They see how you respond to people, how you treat people. And they say, no, no way. Especially, I know my generation and younger, they, they, they are, uh, we are rather people that want to see it. We want you to practice what you preach. It's, I, I, know, I know what you're saying. I know you're saying God is love. But if God is really love, then I will see his love in you. Are y'all with me tonight? So, so God's, God's character, God's character, God's character. 
God's character. Let, let, let's, 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 let's dive in this. Uh, God's character. What, what is God's character? God's character is defined in one word. What is that one word? Who, who, can, who can take just a lucky guess and tell me what that one word is? God's character is defined in one word. What is that? Who said it? Love. God's character is defined by one word, and that is love. Let's, 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 see, that, let's see that in Scripture. Let's see it in Scripture. Go with me to uh, 1 John. Now bear with me just a moment. I got it here. First John chapter four, verse seven. Somebody get that in and read it for me. First John, not John the Baptist, not John the Beloved, John the Revelator. As I heard somebody say one time, I John. <laughs> first, first John, chapter four. At verse 7. Let's go down. So, so, so let's, let's, let's start here at, uh, at verse 7. It says, it says uh, for there are three that bear witness in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Spirit. And these three are one. And there are three that bear witness on the earth, the Spirit, the water, and the blood. And these three agree as one. If we receive the witness of men, the witness of God is greater. For this is the witness of God, which he has testified of his son. He who believes in the son of God has the witness in himself. Look at that. When we believe in the son of God, we have the witness in ourselves. That, that's first John. I'm at chapter first John chapter four, verse verse nine. I started at seven. I went to nine. What did I tell y'all? I'm sorry. Four. Okay. 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 Verse nine. If you receive the witness of men, then the witness of God is greater for the witness for this witness is the witness of God, which he has testified of his son. He who believes in the son of God has the witness in himself. He who does not believe has made him a liar because he has not believed the testimony that God has given of his son. Am I in the fifth chapter? I'm sorry. No wonder why I'm like this. Is not what I'm. It's not, I'm in the fourth, I'm in the fifth chapter. So now we're making sense. Verse, <laughs> y'all pray for me. I'm reading. And look, they over there talking about, this not the fourth chapter he read. <laughs> Why y'all ain't say nothing? <laughs> okay, chapter four. <laughs> chapter four, verse seven. Beloved, let us love one another. That's what I wanted to be. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. That's why I'm like, wait, that, that ain't where I want it to be. 
Okay, but love, let us love one another for God, for, for the love is of God. And everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. That's what I was trying to get this whole time. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry, y'all. Everybody who loves. So the testimony of your relationship with God is not your dance. And I can dance with the best of them. I mean, crisscross, backstep. I can, I can dance with the rest of them for hours. I, I mean, for hours. Y'all saw that boy in my installation who danced. He, we, we wouldn't sit down. That's how we, we dance all night long. Two o'clock in the morning, we still be dancing. I can, but that dance does not define my relationship. You can speak in tongues. I mean, you can, you can shamala. Is that what you call it, sister Scott? You shamala till you turn blue in the face. But them tongues does not define your relationship. You can be faithful. I've been going to this church 42 years, and I didn't miss three Sundays. You can, you can be faithful as you want to be. But that does not define your relationship. You can serve. You can serve in ministry. Sing in the choir. Serve on the door. Fried chicken. Fix the pastor water. Come on, come on. Vacuum the floors. I want to make sure I cover everybody. Whatever it is that God has called you to do in the area of service, you can do that. And that still does not define your relationship with God. Everyone who loves is born of God. You want to know if you've really been born again? You want to know if God has really worked in your life? You know how to love people. I know, I know, I know. Y'all said, boy, I did not come to hear this tonight. You have love. That's why I, I get so perplexed when I see on, on a Sunday come on, come on, come on. how some of y'all look at each other and talk to each other and sit in service. How are we all supposed to be worshiping together? We all supposed to be born of God, but we have no love. And love is an action word. It's not just what you say. God so loved the world that he gave a sacrifice. And that, that's glory to his name. That's how you know you really have the love of God on your heart. Because sometimes showing love will cause you to sacrifice. Sometimes you have to sacrifice your opinion. You have to sacrifice what you wanted to say. You have to sacrifice your facial expressions. Come on, y'all talk to me in here. You have to sacrifice how you wanted to respond, even though they did what you know they did, said what you know they said. But love says, I've got to sacrifice my opinion. I, 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 got, I, could, I could walk them up one side and back down the other. But because he first loved me, yes. huh, because I know I got up this morning and I didn't deserve to get up, but he woke me up anyway. The same love that he has given me, I'm going to show to somebody else. Somebody say God is love. Come on, say it again. Say God is love. God is love and everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. Mm. He, he know, if you show love, you know who God is. Because, let me, let, me tell, let me tell you this, it's impossible. That's how I know many of us don't have the spirit of God in us. Come on, come on. Because it's impossible to have the spirit of God in you and not show love. Every time you act in hatred, in strife, in malice and deceit, you're letting the world know that you're, you're a perpetrator. Paul said it like this. 
He said, you, you can speak in tongues with men and angels. You can prophesy all mysteries. You can do all of these things, these spiritual things. But if you have not love, you are nothing but sounding brass and tingling cymbal. You're useless, in other words. That's why I want us to get, I want us to get this love in our hearts because I, I, I believe that one of the reasons why the church is not growing in the way, and I'm not just talking about this church, I'm talking about the body of Christ, uh, it is not spreading the word of Christ in the way that we should, is because we have people who pro profess God but don't know how to love. That's why we, we preach hate sermons and we run people out of the church. And we, we judge people. We try to clean the fish before we catch them. And, and, and we love, oh, in church, we love, we have no love. We love to talk about what folks are doing. Yes. We love to get on the, you know, y'all seniors, y'all like to get on the, 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 the young folk. We, we, we love, oh, I'm loving it. Look what she coming in, wearing that, wearing that. If you, if you still look like that, you have it on too. Some of us, some of us, we never even got delivered. We, some, some, of, some of us just got too old to do. Oh, y'all going to sit here and look at me like that. You tell me, well, I, I don't drink no more. You can't drink no more. Too old to drink. Come on. You already got cirrhosis of the liver. So I, I, I don't be in and out of beds. That's because no one wants you. Because when you was young, you was dropping it like it was hot. Yeah, yeah all of that. Are y'all with me tonight? Yeah, we are now. <laughs> it is our job to be a reflection of who God is. And in order to know God, you've got to show love. Your love for God is reflected in your love for his people. How can you love a God? whom you've never seen and you hate. You walk past folk. You look them up and down. I, oh, I watch y'all. I see how y'all do. When this, when this person, you don't want to hear them sing, y'all looking all in your purse, asking, you got some God? Just not, mind, not in the worship. Because we don't have love in our hearts. All right, I'm, I'm off. I'm off. I'm off my tangent. I'm off my tangent. God is love, and if we're going to draw people, this is this is what I'm trying to get us to. This is why we have to develop the character of God. Because when we develop God's character, it strengthens our witness. And, and I, I was praying to the Lord. On, on, on what I was going to share in Bible study, he said, I want you to reintroduce me to the people. He says, because as you reintroduce me to the people, as they get a, a good, firm, solid foundation on who I am, then they can grow as disciples. Some of us are trying to grow as disciples and we haven't fully been converted. Paul said, you know you've been converted when you have love. It goes back to that love thing. Love one for another. Are y'all with me tonight? So what is love? What is love? God is love, but, but the definition of love, that, that love uh, in its most visible and effective term is in the life of Jesus. Go with me to Matthew chapter 5. This is, this is God's character. God's character is love. We're going to be talking about love for probably another two weeks. John chapter 5. Let's make sure we end John. Matthew, see, look, look at me. That's why I got notes right here. Matthew chapter 5. But I still mess up with notes. Yeah, y'all, yeah, I'm making sure y'all keeping up. 
<laughs> Matthew chapter 5, verse 43 and 44. I want y'all to see this. I want y'all to see this. And I, I made a profound statement in the beginning that now that we're hearing this, God is going to hold us accountable. Matthew, Matthew, Matthew chapter 5, verse 43. Somebody read it for me. You have heard that it has been said, God shall love thy neighbor and hate thy enemy. Pause. This is Jesus here in this moment. He's teaching and he's recounting on the law. He says, the law has told you to love your neighbor and to hate your enemy. All right, keep reading. But I say unto you. Now, let's pause here. Jesus is speaking. Now, we know we like to say everything in the Bible in red is Jesus said it. This, it has some truth to it. <laughs> what you said, that's mine in red. Yeah, most, in most renditions of the Bible, the red writing represents Jesus speaking. But that is not a theological statement that has everything to do with how the Bible was printed. It has nothing to do with God and his character and his nature. Okay? I want y'all to know that. He says, but, but, I, but I say unto you, he said, I, I didn't come, remember Jesus tells us, I didn't come to destroy the law, but that the law might be fulfilled. So Jesus says, this is the law, and I'm not destroying it, but here's how you fulfill it. Here's how you fulfill it. Verse, verse 44, but I say unto you, love your enemies. That's what it, it starts. It starts not with loving your neighbor. The true character of God is that he loved us. We were not his friends. We were his enemies. I need y'all to hear me today. Sin made us God's enemy. That is the potency of his love. That he first loved us when we had disobeyed him. He first loved us when we had left him. He first loved us when we became his enemy. He, 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 he says, love your enemies. Then, then look at the second thing he says. He says, bless those who curse you. Jesus is speaking of, of response. That when someone curses you out. I want this to simmer. I want y'all to look at it. Instead of cursing back. And I know this is why you got, this is why you have to pray in the morning and ask God before you start your day, Lord, fill me up with your spirit. Because you can't do this on your own. You can't love your enemies on your own. You can't bless those who curse you on your own. You can only do that with the help of God. But I tell you all the time, the Holy Ghost is a gentleman. He's only going to do what you allow him to do. He's going to open the door, but you've got to walk in it. Amen. He says, bless your, uh, love your enemies. He says, those who, who, who curse you, he says, bless them. Look at, look, at, look at what he says. He says, do good to those who hate you. Now, this is, this is fundamental stuff, but I, I think this is it's things, some things we need to rehearse and, and we need to revisit. He says, do good to those who hate you. Th this means that you have to have some intentionality. You have to be intentional in the way that you respond. Which means if you're going to do good to those who hate you, then that means you're going to have to think before you respond. 
be because human nature, <laughs> human nature, self, flesh, down core, puka. Y'all don't know puka. Y'all don't want to know him. Human nature has a response. It has an automatic response. But that response is not what God desires. He wants us to respond like he does. He says, bless those who curse you. Do good to those who hate you. You have to be intentional about your response. You, you must be intentional about your response. Some of us, we're, we're intentional about our response and we still respond the wrong way. Or we, or we sit and think. I, one of the things that burns me up the most is long text messages. Long text messages says that you were intentional enough to type this message up, but you did not have the, uh, I don't, can't say that in church. You, you didn't have the, the fortitude to call and to say it, which means you were intentional enough to type it. Oh, you was bad enough to type it. But you, you were not bad enough to call and say the same thing. And, th and that's how God expects us just as intentional as we are to give somebody a piece of our mind in a text message because we know there ain't nothing they can do but either read it and respond or just read it and just deal with it. God expects us to be that intentional with our love walk. I know I'm boring y'all tonight. It's all right. He says, do good to those who hate you. And this is, this is my favorite one right here because this is what I do. And pray for those who spitefully use you and persecute you. <laughs> this, this, is, this, is, this is what you call uh, what my pastor told me growing up. He said, when, when, when someone is out to get you, he says, what you do is you, you reap coals of fire on their head. I said, what? What does that mean? He says, love them anyhow. Don't stoop down to their level. Don't, don't, don't succumb to their ignorance. But you, you ought to just pray for them. Who, who spitefully use you, people who are in your life, in your area, taking up your space for what they can get out of you. This could be family. Lord knows it could be family. Because family will use you. Y'all not going to be real with me in here tonight. I mean, you, what the songwriter say, use your Till you can't be used no more. Friends will use you if you let them. All right. So Jesus gives us a clear depiction of what love is. And I'm, I'm, I'm done tonight. But here, here's, here's what I want to give you. Love, here, here's a practical definition of love. It is to make a decision to promote the good of another person. It's to make a conscious decision and I'm, I'm ending on this. To promote the good of another person. 
That's God's character. Ah, Lee, I wish, I hope y'all seeing this. God's character suggests that he made a conscious decision to promote the good of another person. He made a conscious decision to give his son to promote your good. He saw you in your sinful state. He saw you in your brokenness. He saw you in your loneliness. And he said, it's not good. It's not, that, that's, that's not good. That's not good. That's not good. So I'm going to make a decision. I'm going to do something of myself on my own to promote the good of another person. That's what love is. And sometimes in promoting the good of someone else, you've got to put them before yourself. And this, this is, this is, woo, this, this is, this is, this is it. It is, it is the conscious decision <clears throat> to promote the good of another person. Here's the last part. Expecting nothing, Expecting nothing. in return. My God today. <clears throat> Expecting nothing in return. It is a decision. To promote, expecting nothing. And, 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 and it, it is a motive with, with no self in, selfish intent. No self, it's no selfish intent. You're, you're, you're not saying, no, I, I, want, I want him to be this. Because I know if he eats this, then it's going gonna, it's gonna to make me better. It, 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 it's not saying I, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to love this person because I know in loving them, it's going to make me better. No. It's to do. It's to promote, make a decision to promote the good of another person. Expecting nothing in return. We're giving tonight. We're, we're closing. We're done. If you, if you want to sow, if you're watching online, if you're here uh, in this place and you want to sow uh, into the life of this ministry, uh, we want to give you this opportunity. We want to give you this opportunity to do so, to do so. They're going to put it up on the screens. We, we want to give you this opportunity, to chan this chance to sow uh, tonight. I'm grateful for the love of God. I'm so grateful for his love. I'm so grateful that while I was a yet sinner, God commended his love toward me. Man, we'll, we'll be continuing this series. I, I pray that this is helping someone, that this is blessing someone, uh, that it is edifying the body of Christ. I'm going to, I go back and I, I listen to myself and I critique myself. I'm my own worst critic. And uh, I, one of the things that I'm working on as a preacher, uh, as a teacher, is illustrations. I want to make sure that I'm making it uh, the most applicable uh, to you so that you can make it, uh, you, you can make it fit exactly what it is you're facing. I know some of us who've been in church for a while, we can hear the word of God raw. I mean, we, we can just take straight steak, no gravy, and we can dissect it, take it into our spirit and, and apply it to the areas that are necessary. But some of us, uh, we, need, we need it to be a little more plain, right? We need, the, we need the King James Version versus the message, or the message versus the King James. And I, I want to make sure that as your leader, as your preacher, a teacher, and pastor, that I'm presenting the word in a way uh, that is plain so that everyone can hear it. So uh, we'll, we'll, we'll pick up next week on this love and how Jesus reinforced and affirmed this love 
and then how also Paul, he uh, ratified and affirmed uh, the love of Jesus. So we'll, we'll pick up on God's character. But if you, if you didn't take anything away from our lesson tonight, you need to know that God's character is love. Right. And in that, we'll get into it next week, how the fruit of the spirit is love and, and it produces uh, other things, other byproducts. When you have the love, but if you have the love, if you can get the love down, then the other things will follow. Are y'all with me tonight? All right. All right. Let's let's look to the Lord in prayer. Father, we thank you and we give you all praise, honor and glory for how you've moved in our midst, how you've spoken to us and how you've allowed your spirit and your anointing to flow through this space. God, I pray right now in the name of Jesus. God, that as this word is planted into our lives, that it would be, God, a seed that brings forth much fruit. God, I pray right now in the name of Jesus that you would continue to transform and to conform us into who you would have us to be. God, we thank you right now in the name of Jesus for your love. God, that you loved us before we were ever conscious of your love. We thank you right now in the name of Jesus that your love is so powerful and it's it's so strong, God, that it can rise up in our lives and we can share your love with someone else. So, Lord, I pray right now in the name of Jesus that you would empower us to be your witnesses, to be your examples, God, to be your reflections in in the earth. We thank you right now in the name of Jesus for what you're getting ready to do. God, I thank you for each and every person under the sound of my voice. I thank you for their commitment and their dedication to you. God, I pray right now, God, that even as they endeavor to study you and study your word in private, in the comforts of their own home, God, that you would speak to their hearts and their minds. God, continue to give them revelation and insight, God, to help them with their personal walk and their personal conviction. God, we want personal relationships with you. So, God, we thank you right now in the name of Jesus for what you're getting ready to do in our lives. God, I thank you that you're going to keep and cover us as we go to our different destinations. God, I pray that you'll be up under us to uphold us around us to protect us, above us to lead us and guide us. And I pray that your holy light will shine in our lives and give us peace. Peace be in our walls, prosperity in our pathways. Until we meet again, God bless you. The Lord bless you real good. For those of you that are watching online, please join us this Sunday. It's first Sunday at 11 a.m. We'll be in worship. 10 o'clock is our Sunday school. 11 o'clock is our worship experience. Invite, invite at least three people to church with you. If everybody invites three people, then somebody should be saved. If everybody invites three people, and, and, and it, it could be somebody at the grocery store, somebody at the hairdresser. It doesn't have to be someone you know. Uh, we actually have these cards. I'm going to make sure that they're in the vestibule uh, that, that just says you're inviting and has our address and the church information on it. I want you all to start witnessing witnessing as your character is developing i want you to be a witness because you're that's the only way you're going to see the fruits of it that's the only way you're going to see the fruit of having good character it's not for you it's for god's use god god wants to use people that have good character all right he, he wants to use people that show the love of god remember uh, on april the 13th is our business meeting uh, so please, please be attentive to those things. A pastor will be preaching a revival on the 23rd, April the 23rd, I think. Yeah, April the 23rd, it's a Wednesday night. Uh, I'll, I'll be preaching for the Antioch Prim Primitive Baptist Church. Uh, uh, Elder uh, Russell, Ever Elder Bobby Russell will be in revival. So I want all of you that can and will go with the pastor uh, on the 23rd. So there'll be no Bible study it's the 24th. On the 24th, there'll be no Bible study on the 24th, but we'll be uh, in revival at Antioch. I believe it's in Murfreesboro, right? In Murfreesboro. So all of you that can and will, uh, more information will go out about that. But we're, we're at our time tonight. Uh, please go in the love of God. I love all of you with the love of Christ. Go, go in God's love.